Hallelujah. We welcome you, welcome you, welcome. Let's come and be blessed. Hallelujah. We welcome you for another day's, uh, another day, another Sunday in the Word of God. Now today we are having a special service. We are having a young people service today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We already opened up the service with prayer. Hallelujah. And reading the scriptures. So in this day and time, there are so many youths that do not attend church for one reason or another. So we celebrate the youth today. Hallelujah. Let them, let them give them a hand clap and a standing ovation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the youth today. How you those that want to sit in the Word, those that want to go to Bible class and Sunday school. We thank you. Hallelujah. You love the Lord. Hallelujah. We appreciate you. Let's give him another hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to Dare to Be Different Ministry. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just joyful. I have hallelujah. The young people here have gotten baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Spirit. They love Bible class. Hallelujah. They just love the youth Bible class. They love to fast and they pray. We have prayer every evening and they all they faithfully tend them a prayer, the evening prayer. So then we just thank them. Hallelujah. We thank God again for the faithfulness of the young people here dare to be different ministries. So my message is coming from Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10. Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 through 10. That's Jeremiah Chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you as a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for you shall go to all that I shall send you, and whatsoever I command you shall speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And verse 10, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. The message, the title of my message is Hallelujah. I cannot is not an excuse. I cannot is not an excuse. The words I cannot is the opposite form of I can. Before you try to do anything, you make excuses not to try. So excuses mean to seek to defend or give a, any reason for yourself not to do what you should do. Excuses also mean we are trying to get someone, and that's what Jeremiah was trying to do, and that someone was God, to release him from doing something. God was not releasing Jeremiah from being his prophet. So when God have a calling for your life, hallelujah, although doubts, fear will devastate you, be confident that God will equip you to do whatever he has chosen for you to do. 
God called Jeremiah to be a prophet unto the nations. He said, I, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. He is to be believed to be 20 years old at that time. The Lord, the first person he focused on was I. He's I. You have set, we have to set aside I and focus on God who has called us. Jeremiah used the word ah, A-H. Ah is used to express emotion ranging from blissful contentment to acute serious discomfort. He was seriously discomfort when God told him he had called him to be a prophet and disgust. He was disgusted with that, those words depending on the speaker's tone of voice. And God used the tone of voice too. When, when Jeremiah said, ah, I, and ah, he was, again, expressing emotions of serious discomfort, like many of us did when God called us. We, some of us didn't want to be called. Some was anxious, and I was crying on my way, talking to the bishop <laughs> when the Lord had called me. And, and, uh, and sometimes it's serious discomfort and rebellion to God. I cannot be a prophet, he was saying. I cannot. Ask someone else, God, not me. Here are some excuses that some people make for not responding to God's call on their life. They are fearful. Satisfied being in the background or satisfied not doing anything for God. They got baptized, Jesus, they filled with the Holy Spirit, and they said, I'm satisfied. They are too young, and some may say they're too old. They are afraid to speak before the people. When I first preached my message, I was shaking, my stomach was upset, I was scared to speak before the people. And, and they do not, they're not expert in the Word of God. Like Jeremiah and many of us felt. We felt unqualified for this holy, anointed work. Ben Franklin wrote, he said, it, he said, he that is good at, at making excuses is seldom good for anything else. He said, ben, ben Franklin wrote, he that is good at making excuses is seldom good for anything else. George Washington said, it is better to offer no excuse than a bad excuse. And then George Washington Carver said, 99% of all the failures come from people who have a habit of making excuse. Woo. So whatever you want to be in your life, young people, whatever God has put in your heart, Whatever career and goal that God has put in your heart, do not allow excuses to stop you. You must say, yes, I can. Jeremiah thought he had given God two good excuses for not being a prophet. Again, he said, I cannot speak, for I am a child. God refused his excuses and wanted to hear, I can, and not, I cannot. But despite what Jeremiah thought about himself, despite Jeremiah's excuses, God called him to be a prophet to the nations. What a call. God says, see, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy and to throw down, to build, and to plant. When God says see in the beginning, after he said in the beginning of I have this day, see means understand, I want you to understand this, I want you to realize this, and get the message, I called you. Jeremiah had no problem, no previous, I mean, uh, warning, visions or dreams. He didn't get a word from anybody that he was called to be a prophet. So he was unprepared. 
probably going along with his, his day doing whatever he was doing. And suddenly, he was called by God to be a prophet. It is understandable why Jeremiah responded the way he did. He didn't have time to go on a three-day fast. Pray to make sure he heard from God. We sometimes don't know in advance the plan of God had that he has for our life. Prophets not only tell the future, they give fearful warning from God and judgment. God was calling his people to repent and to keep his covenant with him. And he wanted Jeremiah. God could have spoke his voice from heaven. But God uses people. He uses people no matter what age. He uses us to do his work. It is an honor, hallelujah, if we just put our side, hallelujah. Today, God mostly send warnings from the preached word or the taught word calling people to repentance. God performed drastic message, and he would do it even now to change the nation of Israel, to change their idolatrous, their idolatrous ways. They was idolatrous. And at this time, prophets addressed whole nations, but the people they addressed did not want to hear the message. And even today, they don't want to hear the preached word or the taught word from God. And God has said in the word, and in his word, there will be a famine for the word. So I want to emphasize this. God said, before I form you in the belly, I knew you. I love this meaning of I knew you. It means I have known you before there was a you. Hallelujah. 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 He said, I have known you before there was a you to be known by anyone else. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when Jeremiah was speaking for himself, hallelujah, and God, he's speaking for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. And before, and I'm going to say it again. Glory. I have known you before there was a you to be known by anyone else. And before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Sanctified means to approve. God approved him. Before he was in his mother's womb, he accepted him and blessed him before he was in his mother's womb. The verb new also has a greater meaning that new or to see, because new also means to see. It means to recognize the worth and purpose of someone God has knowledge of. He said, I recognize your purpose. I recognize your worth. You are valuable to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This awesome verse means that no child, not one child is a mistake. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now nobody is a mistake. Not one child. You may not have been a planned pregnancy, but you were never a mistake. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God knew Jeremiah. He chose Jeremiah. God appointed Jeremiah. God predestined Jeremiah worthy of the divine call and purpose he had for his life. God also know, knew you. Each and every one of you young people, he knew you. He knows you. He knows your value and your worth and the purpose that he has planned for your life. Just trust him. Jeremiah 29 and 11 said, For I know the thoughts I have. Hallelujah. I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, a waiting and a wonderful end. God chose you, young people, to be saved. God chose you, young people,
to be baptized in Jesus' name. God chose you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, found in Acts 2, 38 and 39. God called you to be the light in the midst of a dark world. God called you to be his sons and his daughters. God is calling young people all over the world to say, come back, find you a church that you can sit under the word of God. It is time to say yes and not, I cannot. Jeremiah realized that his life and future was not about I, I, I. And he realized he belonged to a loving God. And you must also believe, young people, that you belong to a loving God. And if you let him, he has great plans for your life. And feed and feed of Philippians 4.13, we must proclaim, young people, when God has a calling for you, he'll let you know beyond the shadow of God. And he will let other people know as well. I can do all things through, through Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ, with Christ. Christ in me, which strengthened me. God strengthened Jeremiah. God empowered him to be his prophet. And what a prophet he was. God wanted him to know who he is. Who he is. I am that I am is with him. I am that I am called him to be a prophet. I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I want him to be a prophet. And if he could not, if God could not and would not help him, empower him, he would never have called him to be a prophet. He would not fulfill his destiny. And God doesn't fail. Case in point. Then the Lord reached with what God did for Jeremiah. The Lord reached out his hand and touched Jeremiah's mouth and told him, I have now at this very moment filled your mouth with my word. Glory, hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then the Lord, hallelujah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah had no more excuse. He could no longer say, I cannot speak. Hallelujah. He could no longer say, I am a child. It encouraged him and it empowered him to speak whatever. God wanted him to say he would never send you out without being with you. Jesus experienced a supernatural touch from God. Following his baptism, immediately coming out of the water, the heavens opened, and the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And God said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And when God anointed him and touched him, with the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus went about teaching the Word of God with power and fearlessness. God wants to touch the young people with the Holy, the gift of the Holy Spirit, giving them power to be a witness for His Son Jesus. Will you receive His touch? Will you receive His touch? God have a work for you. It may be joining the praise team. It may be the choir or playing musical instrument or ushering, etc. in your local church and witness the gospel of salvation to the lost. No work is ever too small in the kingdom of God. Whatever God wants you to do, whatever God wants you to do, just say yes. One day God may call you to be a young pastor, a youth pastor, or a teacher or a preacher of the gospel or a prophet of God or whatever the work, the words, hallelujah, 
that God does not want you to hear is I cannot. The younger generation must receive our mantle. Must receive, I mean, they must go on in our shoes and continue the work that God has, that God did in us. When we pass away, there's a legacy going on. There's a ministry going on. Hallelujah. The church will be going on. Amen, saints. Amen. The young again generation must be ready to receive the mantle. To repeat, Jeremiah said, I am only a child. Then the Lord said to him, look how the Lord, the God, firmly talked to him. He said, do not say I am a child. For you will go. Woo! He said, you will go. And to everyone I send you. And speak whatever I tell you. Woo! God had to be, you know, God was easy in the beginning. And he said, no, I got it. <laughs> because God knew how he was feeling in, in his heart. He was standing there listening to God. But God said, I got to move him. You know what I'm saying? Moving into his destiny. And Jeremiah said, I only a child. When, when uh, Jeremiah said, I am only the child, he was telling God again, I'm too young for the work that you are calling for me to do. You don't let us say, God. Don't you know that I could already know that you can do, but you don't know that you can do? <laughs> so trust me. He said, I don't have the skill to speak. God had to be firm with Jeremiah. He saw the wickedness of the people. He had to send this prophet to warn the people. Perhaps they would repent. God had a very important work for him to do. He was the young man chosen to do the will of God and not his will. Do not be afraid of anyone, he said, for I will be with you to deliver you. Now notice this. Although Jeremiah was afraid, although he didn't want to step into his prophetic ministry, he did not run from God. Too many young people are running from God. He went where God sent him and said what God wanted him to say. God's divine presence gave him the strength to do the work he was called to do. What a difference it made to know that when God sent us, we have a faithful and almighty traveling companion. Whoa, hallelujah. Oh, yes, we do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The same thing happened to Christians today. They are misunderstood. That's why people don't want to go. It's a misunderstood, thrown in jail, and hallelujah. And it says misunderstood, persecuted. We are arrested in prison and accused of being judgment. But there's a saying that people say, don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't blame the deliverer of the bad news. Jeremiah told the people they were rebelling against God, disobeying his laws, and heading for judgment. This judgment was for Israel idolatry. They continue in idolatry. As God sit on his throne and blessing them, they continue to give all the credit to these dead idol gods and rebelling against the holy word. God also said to Je Jeremiah again, today, this very moment, and this wonderful, this is beautiful here. He said, I am the one who has made you a fortified. A fortified city means strong defense. An iron pillar, one who is strong, unyielding, and immovable in following God's commandments. He said, I made you like this. And then he said, bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and its population. The bronze wall means they will fight against you, but never prevail over you. Remind what Jesus said about his church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. He's, I am with you to rescue you. 
and Jeremiah 18, 1 and 18, 19, prevail when they will not overcome you or be victorious against you. Notice how God used industrial basic language to describe and encourage his servant of uh, Jeremiah. He said, I made you a fortified city, and I am pure a bronze wall. Look how he did that. He said, I want you to see, because he was familiar with that. God wanted to hear him say yes to the calling he had on his life. And he wants the young people to do the same thing. God is not saying that you are, that you are making excuses if you cannot pick up a one-tongue object, like if you're picking up something, something that is impossible for you to do as a child. This is not, this cannot be done. It's the realm of the supernatural is what God is describing and sharing in this lesson. God is saying, I will equip you to do my work. I will equip you when I call you. God said, Jeremiah, therefore gird up. He saw me. He said, I know you're 20 years old, 18 years old. He said, but gird up. That means get ready for action. Woo! Hallelujah. And arise and speak unto them all that I command you. Be not dismayed. He said, discouraged, which means discouraged, distressed, saddened at your faces. Lest I come confound you. That means I'm going to confuse you before them. God meant it. He was serious about him getting a word to the people. God is saying to Christians today, in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, a therefore, my beloved brother, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In Jeremiah's day, the men had to wear, had to tie their loose robes together with a belt in order to run or work. That meant Jeremiah would have a fight on his hand. He had to be ready. Gird up, God. Gird up your lungs. Be strong in your mind. Stand and refuse to, to uh, let down. Here are two main examples. There are two main examples of God calling the youth to work for him. Two other main examples of God calling the youth to work for him. In 2 Kings 22, 1 and 20, Josiah was called to be the king of Judah. He was the son of the king Amon and the grandson of, um, of Manasseh, Bel um, um, Man Manasseh, yeah, Manasseh, I already have said it, Manasseh. And both, listen to this, both of them, uh, both of them, his father and his grandfather were wicked kings of Judah. The grandfather and the father. Two generations. But look at Josiah. Josiah was a godly king. He didn't let their wickedness influence him to be wicked. And known as one of the world's youngest king who began to rule at age eight. He loved God. He didn't want to be nothing like his grandfather and his father at age eight. After his father was killed. Now look what Josiah did. Josiah could have said, I cannot. Children learn to say no at an early age. You could say, no, no, God, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want you to notice this. Not all children who are born in the belly, to come out of the belly of their mom, have the same behavior as their ungodly biological fathers. It's shown here. He could, he could have been passed down to the third generation, but he made up his mind that I want to live for God at the age of eight. Josiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the ways of David, his spiritual father. He can look at his biological father, he said, I'm walking in the ways of my spiritual father. And God wanted you to walk in the ways of your spiritual father. And he did not turn aside to the right or the left. 
at a young age of eight, Josiah was focused on God. He was devoted to God. And the young people can be the same today. In the 18th year, when he turned 18, 10 years later of his rule, look what he did. He raised enough money to repair the temple. He was concerned about the church of God. And during the repairs, the high priest, Hilkiah, found the book of the law. The book of the law was lost. So when Hilkiah uh, read it to uh, Josiah, this 18-year-old young king tore his clothes, which is a sign of mourning and repentance. That's how deep he loved God. Josiah, for a time of, he called a time of national, nationwide repentance. Everybody in that nation, he called for them to repent. The law was read to the people of the land, and a covenant was made between the people. Hallelujah and God, this one 18 year old man, hallelujah, what God can do with one who's devoted, young, young youth that devoted to him. The young uh, uh, Josiah stood and, at, by the pillar and made a covenant before God himself, 18 years old, to walk after the Lord and keep his commandments and his testimony. You can do that. Make a covenant. I thought I make a covenant with you, Father. I'm going to cleave to you, obey your word. And his statutes, his statutes, his laws. He said, I made a covenant with this. Lord said, with all his heart. See, the key word is with all your heart. That's why God said, love me with all your heart. He said, with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant, covenant and that was written in the book. All, like I said, is the key word of young people. And all the people joined this 18-year-old king in the covenant and many changes followed. The temple was cleansed. Look what happened. See, God was saying all of this. The temple was cleansed from all objects of pagan worship. It was worshiping God. They was worshiping the idol gods and the idolatrous high places in the land were destroyed because of this young 18-year-old king restored the fulfillment of the Passover and removed mediums. There was also mediums who claimed they were talking to the dead. God was looking at all of this and talking to God. They were talking to the dead that came in. Dead, it ain't a lie. Dead, dead. They were talking to a holy God and witches that was in this land. That's why God called uh, the young people. This is Josiah. Hallelujah. And Mary is another person, sir. Young person served God. It is said that Mary was in her late teens or early twenties when the angel went to her and said, "Behold, you are highly favored. You should bring forth the Son of God." Mary could have said, I cannot do this. <laughs> no, God, not me. I'm engaged to Joseph. I'm engaged to be married. I wanted to have his first child. She could have made all these excuses. Then then she said, well, then she would have said, that people know in this small community that I am uh, uh, engaged uh, to, to him and that I'm pregnant. What would people say? This was not my plan, God. I cannot. But instead, glory, hallelujah, Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. She did not submit to I cannot. She obeyed the call of God on her life and birth the Savior of the world whom we are worshiping today. Lord, we thank you. Mary, hallelujah, we thank you for her mind, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's five major lessons that you can learn from this, uh, from Jeremiah, Joseph, and Mary, young people, today. Although you are a child, 
which means a teen or a young adult, you can live for God. You can let the will of God be done in your life. You can live a holy life despite your family bloodline and the sinful and wicked conditions surrounding you. And with God, you can do the work that he has called for you to do. Jeremiah, Josiah, Josiah and Mary left great testimonies to you young people that you can serve God. What kind of testimony are you leaving behind? This message revealed that Christian young people, if you make up your mind with all your heart. You can live a godly life. Loving God and serving Him. And in closing, God wants to use this generation today. Don't let Him say, don't say, I cannot. Don't let I cannot be your excuse. God was with Jeremiah. And he and Jesus will be with you. So in Jeremiah 40, 29 and 31, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth, it says in this scripture, get tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who put hope in the Lord will, we, will renew their strength. They will soar, hallelujah, on wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. God bless you and all the young people Come to the altar. Parents, if you have young people, let them come with you as you look at this video. And I'm going to have minister, one of my ministers, Minister Howard, to pray over the young people. In Jesus' name. you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you sent Jesus to die for all that none may be lost. I thank you for filling the young people with joy, with peace and courage. Help them to be brave in sharing your word with the lost and confused. Help them to be strong and rooted and grounded in you so that they may continue to build their tomorrow with the power of the Holy Spirit to withstand against principalities, to stand against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Keep them in your ever-loving arms. Let them receive freely the gift of faith and accept it with gratitude and receive it with generosity, knowing there is a loving and merciful God that covers them. Help them to see that it is you, God, that gives them peace, that gives them joy and happiness, not this old wicked world they live in, but not the world they are. Help them to know the fruits they bear as they journey through this life you have created for them. Let your spirit of truth abide in them so that they may live in hope, grow in faith, grow in love, grow in your word, and keep your commandments. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen.